For more on gluten intolerance and the problems it causes, we are joined now by Dr. Reiner Ulrich. He's a gastroenterologist at the Charité Hospital in Berlin. Thank you so much for joining us here, Dr. Ulrich. Now, what do you think of this report and the research that's just come out of Mainz? Is it a game changer? I think it is definitely not a game changer for celiac disease because nobody doubts that gluten is the main factor in celiac disease. It may be a game changer if it all comes true, uh, <laughs> that uh, gluten sensitivity apart from celiac disease may be caused by these ATIs. What does it mean then for people who are intolerant to gluten if it is in fact true that it's ATIs causing their problem and not gluten? For the celiacs, nothing changes, as I already said. Uh, for those with gluten sensitivity, it uh, would be uh, an explanation uh, for their symptoms. But uh, the therapy would all uh, anyway be the same. You have to avoid wheat and related grain. What's the main difference between ATIs and gluten? They're both proteins. Yes, uh, gluten is a very important protein for wheat. Uh, it just leads to the consistence of bread and nothing works without gluten. Uh, it is just uh, so sticky, you know, mm -hmm. and this is a very Im important for baking and all this. In contrast to this, uh, the ATIs are just there to improve pest resistance, for example. And uh, we, as uh, consumers, if we eat the food, we don't profit from the ATIs. And if they harm us, I think they should rather be reduced. Absolutely. Now, you yourself are doing your own studies on uh, gluten and its problems uh, for the human tract, the, the indigestion tract. Can you tell us how your studies either are similar or differ to the report that we've just looked at? Uh, it's a bit different because uh, we look at non-celiacs who have uh, irritable bowel syndrome, which is a variety of gastrointestinal symptoms for which we do not know the cause at present. And we speculate that probably a part of these patients may profit from a gluten-free diet and may be gluten sensitive, although they do not have celiac disease. And this report would fit very nicely because it would, could explain such symptoms in the absence of celiac disease. So there may be actually something behind this report. Um, now, you uh, are you seeing an increase in people uh, who are suffering from IBS, celiac disease and uh, in intolerance to gluten? There's definitely an increase in diagnosed celiac disease, which is related to, uh, to much improved diagnostic methods we have. Uh, 15 years ago, you had to get upper endoscopy and biopsy to diagnose celiac disease. Now you can just draw a blood sample and look for antibodies. So uh, this is much easier diagnosed and therefore uh, much more people are diagnosed with this disease. Is this why we're seeing an increase in gluten intolerant products on the marketplace? Uh, I'm not sure of that. I think a lot of this is just the hype and uh, you can sell anything if you write on it. Uh, it's free from whatever. Everybody thinks this must be healthier for me. Okay. Is it healthier? Uh, maybe if Dr. Chopin has uh, its way, it could be. Definitely so. <laughs> Dr. Ulrich, thank you so much for joining us here at Tomorrow Today. Nice.